Day four. Oh, thank goodness it's black tea. I stayed up too late last night. I wanted to wait until Justin got home from work so I could see him. So I didn't go to bed till like 1 a.m. And then I woke up sneezing my head off because, oh, I don't even know. This time of year, a lot of times I get really sneezy. Um, and then I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got up at like 7.30. And then I came out here, sat down on the couch to just kind of watch some YouTube videos and relax and it's pouring down raining which we need the rain so bad um i don't know how many of you are aware of the um kind of what's been going on in tennessee lately <clears throat> but gatlinburg especially was hit pretty hard by some wildfires we've had a lot of um fires on the sides of the mountain um, we had a couple of weeks there where the air quality was so bad that they were basically like if you don't have to go outside don't go outside uh, because we haven't had rain in like four months or something like that. It's been the longest drought that we've seen in like a hundred years or something crazy like that. Um, definitely, like I said, the Gatlinburg area. I've been following that really closely because we are about an hour and a half, uh, hour and 45 minutes, something like that from Gatlinburg. I used to live about 30 minutes from Gatlinburg and it's somewhere that I Grew up, grew up going to. I mean, we still go there like once a year usually. My parents were actually supposed to be there this weekend for a cheerleading competition for my nieces, but that got canceled obviously because they're barely even letting the people who live there year round back in, much less tourists. Um, but it's been really sad because a lot of people lost their homes. Um, a lot of people did uh, lose family members. And um, the area that was hit the hardest, Chalet Village, we have actually stayed there before. We stayed there for my birthday with my best friends um, a couple of years ago. And when I was seeing kind of like the footage of it and what happened, I, I wasn't surprised at how quickly it spread just because the road up there is very narrow and switchback. And so it's it was just scary. I can't imagine being up there with the fires burning all around you and trying to get out. So terrifying but complete tangent um the rain is very very needed um but yeah i'm gonna drink my tea get to editing um because i've got some videos i filmed yesterday that i want to edit and i've got some other vid videos i want to film today um and then who knows what i'll do today because we're not going to get ooh, teas ready we're going to get a christmas tree in the rain that's why i'm wearing this ridiculous outfit which is a little boy's rain jacket because i don't the adult ones are too big for me. So, I'm wearing this ridiculous rain jacket. I'm never going to be able to turn out of here. <laughs> are you excited about, about a tree? Sure. Peanuts. Garage tree! We're letting it dry off in the garage for a little while since it was pouring down rain, but it's supposed to rain for the next couple of days. So it was either get it now or wait like two weeks to get the tree and I wasn't waiting that long. So yeah, can't wait to bring it in the house. Hopefully tomorrow, yay. Someone's very clingy all of a sudden. So I've got my book, which I'm really enjoying about halfway through it. 
and I really this is exactly what I needed right now and it's like compulsively readable and the characters are really great I'm very much enjoying it um, I also have my tea over here try not to spill it very hot um, it's the treacle tart tea from Adagio and then over there I'm burning my cranberry candle that I can only burn when Justin's not home because he really really doesn't like the cranberry scented candles but I love them so it's my sneaky when he's at work candle what day is it oh okay it's day five. <laughs> oh guys uh Yep, that's about how I feel. <laughs> so we always have them cut off a slice at the bottom of the tree when um, we get a, a Christmas tree. Like this is from last year. Look how nice and pretty that looks. So because it was raining and we we're kind of in a hurry, this is what we ended up with this year. And it's sitting on the stove. So I just keep thinking, and so does my husband, that it's like a rotten piece of food. So that's disgusting. This side's nice and pretty, so maybe we should just turn it over like that and not look at the gross side. Yeah. So I've got my tea now and I'm ready to talk about books. Let me get a sip and then I'll grab my book. And our house is kind of crazy. Um, you can see all the Christmas boxes back there. We're getting ready to decorate the tree today. We're gonna bring it in um, and I'm excited. Um, so I stayed up until 1 a.m. finishing this book because it was so good. It was just one of those books that I got sucked into and I wanted to know what was happening and I really liked the characters and it was just all around really good. Basically this is a book about a woman who it's like it's not told in dual perspectives it's told in dual timelines by the same person. Um, so the main character Vera it tells her story in um, 1913 let me look I should have looked before I started filming because you know that makes everything easier yeah so 1913 and then the 20s so the 1913 part is set in the fall of um, her time in college at Vassar so right off the bat we're talking women's college early 1900s I'm so there for that she has this friend B who is kind of she's coming there from Agnes Scott which you know you're already talking about one of the southern sisters so my little women's college heart is just so happy um and she basically it kind of follows their friendship and the mischief that they get into that is not necessarily something that would be prohibit I mean sanctioned by her mother who's like this really strict matron who you know wants her to be this perfect society wife and all of that and then we get, we jump to the 20s um, so it alternates chapters for most of the book uh, between Vassar and New York City in the 20s um, after she is married and um, kind of follows her life as this bored society wife um, and kind of what she's doing. People who live there want a mural painted in like the pool area um, and so they hire a muralist and it kind of follows her interactions with the muralist and kind of how her current path in the 20s parallels some things that happened to her while she was at Vassar in in the 19, 1910s. Um, and it's just really good. I, I liked the way that they wove art into it and I just think that the writer did an incredible job with this one. Um, she actually teaches at a girls school apparently and I looked her up on Twitter because I was like, I really want to find everything that she's written and this is apparently her first book. So definitely hope there's more to come from Amber Brock because I really enjoyed this one. So Justin woke up and the first thing out of his mouth was, what? There's a Snorlax! And so now we're getting in the car because we have to go get the Snorlax. He's been up for five minutes. I hope you're proud of yourself. Still don't like the new Pokemon tracker. But if I catch this, I'll make an exception. <laughs>
first ornament to go on the tree. It's our penguin family ornament. Oh, it's not focusing at all. Yay! Where do we want it to go? You can put it on. Right there. So obviously this ornament has to go on the tree. Wait, I gotta put oh it darn, it's broken. Where's put the back button? Box. <laughs> I want <laughs> Listening to Barry Manilow, eating Christmas tree cakes, and drinking eggnog while we decorate the tree. I just started this book and I'm really excited about it. It's by a Holland's alum and I just realized that she was a freshman when I was a senior at Holland's and that's really exciting because we were there at the same time so yay! Now we're gonna go get Mexican food for dinner. Yay! Day six it is. It's back to work with me. So I'm gonna take this one and drink it this afternoon. Uh, I love it so much. Look at it. Look at it. 